Hey folks, my guest today is Aaron Carr. He spent 15 years in the customer loyalty industry before jumping out and launching Carrot, a cloud-based employee recognition platform. Aaron, are you ready to take us to the top? Certainly am. Let's do it. All right. So you're in a hot space. This is like HR tech space, employee performance in a remote world gets very, very important. What are you seeing in terms of COVID? How's COVID impacted you guys? So it's funny because for the first month when sort of the March lockdowns happened last year, it, I think we were all concerned. Uh, it sort of hit businesses like, you know, pretty hard. But a few months later, everybody was talking about, well, now we've got this challenge of keeping people motivated and engaged while they're working remotely. And suddenly the industry like hit this massive uptick and we started getting more calls uh, than we did pre-COVID. So it's been interesting to say the least. Certainly some industries you know, are on tighter budgets, but I'd say our HR tech and specifically uh, employee engagement and recognition is really on a lot of people's, uh, people's radar right now. So it's actually had a net positive impact, I'd say. That's interesting. Okay, now what are customers paying on average per month to use your technology? Yeah, so we're primarily subscription based. Uh, it's a per user uh, per month fee. We start at three dollars per head per month. Um, on average, based on the account size, it's about uh, I'd say around two hundred, two hundred and thirty dollars per account. Oh wow. Okay, so these are teams are signing up like 50, 60, 70 employees right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. So predominantly, we're hitting the small to mid market. So I'd say our customers are between 50 and 200 uh, employees per shot. Interesting. And how many logos are signed up? How many individual companies? Yeah. So we're still, uh, we're in year three and a half as Carrot. We've got close to 100 logos. Um, And I do want to call attention to the fact that before what inspired Carrot was we, we launched this uh, sort of custom program for this really big company in the U S that's got like 3000 locations. Mm -hmm. So we've also got that one big logo off to the side, but then the rest of our logos are again in the small to mid space. So you launched in what? 2018. Yeah. And do you remember? Yeah. First year in 2019, do you remember total revenue? Oh gosh. Well, we were doing about in 2019, our MRR was predominantly from our one side, cut, the one big guy. And then we had a handful of um, Carrot customers. It was about 15K MRR mm-hmm. um, at that point. Um, and we would have been doing in 2019, probably about one and a half million total. So our again, our revenue is comprised of subscription revenue on the one side, but because we're a rewards and recognition platform, they're also buying, in effect, rewards, which from for us are digital gift cards. So that gets sucked into our sort of our revenue line as well, and accounts for that difference. So, so how much, like per month right now, are you making just from the GMV percent on reward purchases? So total GMV per month, we're going to do uh, rewards revenue total this year is three point five. Projected so, or recognized so far? Uh, no, that's projected total, but that includes um, what we've done up till date, up until the end of July. So, what, what is that number? We've done about. We're very back half heavy, so we've done about one point five to date, and we've got another two million that will come in by the end of the year. Interesting. Okay, and so, 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 how much will you make on one point five million of reward purchases through your platform? So the gift cards, it's very thin margin. It's three percent. So wish it were more. We're working on negotiating better margins, but gift cards are notoriously uh, thin margin in that respect. Got it. So just to be clear, the one point five million uh, is you're saying is revenue. That is total volume, or that's your three percent take? No, that's our total volume. I Got wish it, it were our three percent take. Yeah, working on it. We're working on getting there. Fair. Yeah. So your 3% take on that then would be about 45 grand. So you're doing between like five and 10 grand a month right now on percent of GMV revenue. Exactly. Interesting. And is that included in the 23K number you just told me for MRR? No, no. Uh, MRR is completely distinct. So MRR is pure, like the customer has two charges effectively. They've got their recurring charge, obviously for their subscription, and then they separately buy rewards. So those are more on an invoiced basis. Yep. 
Yeah. So on average, though, across these 100 customers, you've got, again, 230 a month coming in per customer mm -hmm. for a 23K in MRR. But then each customer is also spending some amount, again, on these rewards. So really, when you add in the reward revenue, your 3% cut, you're more like $30,000 a month in, in total revenue, right? Correct. In fact, um, in fact, our total, I refer to it as net platform revenue. So net platform revenue uh, is to, uh, for last month was closer to 40 K. That's great. Yeah. So you call it like, you're almost at like a half million dollar run right now. Have you done all this all bootstrapped or did you guys raise capital? Uh, I like to say we're mostly bootstrapped in 2018. I got it in my head that we needed to raise some capital. We did a very small pre-seed round, uh, less than 300 K Canadian. So very little in terms of, in terms of dilutionary impact. Um, what was the valuation on that? So we did it. We had a, it was a safe. We did a valuation cap of two million. Okay. And would you change anything about like if you redid it today, or did that does that feel like the right move? Do, do you know honestly? Um, it was. I think we needed the capital at the time, but we've also had a friendly relationship with uh, the Business Development Bank uh, of Canada (BDC), and we probably could have just borrowed the capital as well. What we needed to keep running. I mean, we plowed it all into marketing and sales, so it paid some dividends. Um, but you know, 300 K really isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. So if I were to go back, I might've deferred that and maybe just look to an alternative non-dilutionary source. And what is the team size today? You said you plowed that all into marketing. Yeah. So we're, we're a team of six. Uh, I have four software developers, uh, uh, one marketing person slash client support, uh, customer success person and myself. So yeah. I'm, I'm functionally the primary salesperson. Uh, my marketing slash customer support does all of our demand gen and handles all the incoming stuff that frankly, I don't want to touch. And then we've got our four full-time software developers. And so Aaron, are you sole founder then? So I have uh, let's just call it a silent partner. Who's got a minority holding uh, and he's more there as an advisor. I call him my corporate Swiss army knife. Cause he does like all of our finances and sort of provides a lot of strategic guidance, but I'm functionally the, the sole uh, let's say operating founder. So when you look at that, plus the two hundred thousand dollars raise and the dilution associated there, how much rev or how much equity do you still own today, personally? So uh, on a fully diluted basis, I'm about sixty five percent. So I still have like a good chunk. Yeah, that that feels really good. I imagine that feels really good. Um, yeah. How do you grow? Like how do you, how do you double revenue? So uh, fantastic question. Honestly, I think for us, it comes down to plowing more money into well, intelligently plowing more money into demand generation and possibly starting to build out a bit more of a sales team. Because we're mostly dealing in the small to mid market, the economics are more oriented towards um, inbound versus outbound. But we are starting to add a lot more sophistication to the platform and starting to get calls from the much larger uh, multinational organizations. So those calls are very welcome, but it's like we're in that intermediary phase where we still get nervous picking up the phone when somebody huge calls us. Um, we're more just super comfortable in like the sub 1000 uh, level. Uh, we can knock those guys out all day, but um, how do we grow? I think investing more in demand generation. Have you already run a test there and you know it sort of works? How much did you spend last month on demand gen? Um, so all in direct advertising costs are between five to seven K Canadian a month. Okay. So and how many new leads will you get from that? We get per month, 50 to 60, uh, reasonably qualified leads in the form of demo requests and free trials. Okay. And how many convert to paid? Uh, we're converting about five customers a month, five paying customers a month. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. So two, 100 customers today, maybe 105, 110 as you go on month to month. Now, do these customers stick? What's churn look like? So last year, we calculated uh, churn at about 16% on an annual basis. Um, this year, it's coming in below that. Like it's, it's sort of in the 10 to 15 range. Um, like we're losing less than an account uh, per month. Um, so we've only been around for, as I mentioned, three and a half years. So we don't really have full visibility on long-term uh, churn trends. But based on those numbers, we're seeing accounts last like up to five years. Um, and certainly we do have accounts. Our oldest account is 
like since the inception. Like we've yep. got a number of accounts that are three and a half years and they're still- Are you upselling them, Aaron? Do, do you have upsell revenue that makes up more than 16% of the churn? We're trying to get there. We're actually just about to embark on a sort of a pricing and upsell sort of strategic review to figure out what services can we append or what upsell packages can we um, can we add into the mix. Right now, upsell is more just as, they, as our customers grow and add more employees, they subscribe to more seats. And we do see that consistently that natural, there's a natural occurring revenue growth um, as the economy improves and as things rebound in particular, they hire more. Um, so, but what that, is it today though? Like in the last 12 months, did you expand more to get a, to 100% net dollar retention or no, you're still below that? Um, it, it, so, sorry, can, can you repeat that? Yeah, like of, of the customers you had exactly one year ago, it sounds like 16% of the revenue churned. How much upgrade revenue were you, were you able to drive? Was it more than 16% upgrade revenue? Yeah, it's about 20 to 25%. Got it. So your net dollar retention is like 109%. Yeah. I yeah. see. That's great. That's yeah. a good place to be in. Uh, and you're trying to expand that, it sounds like, which is nice. Yeah. Um, any acquisition, folks reaching out, trying to buy the business? You're in a hot space. There's a lot of money floating around. Yeah. <laughs> What's the biggest offer you turned down? Uh, so I'm not sure that we've... Act- so let's just say there's been a lot of heavy flirting. Um, we haven't actively turned anything down yet because like the flirting hasn't necessarily gotten to a marriage proposal. Yeah. But we, we get, uh, we get contacted by PE firms. They usually want us to be a bit bigger, to be fair. Uh, we've had a few strategic acquirers come along. There are some stuff that's kind of floating out there at the moment. Um, two million cash all up front. Do you take the deal? Two million cash all up front. Um, honestly, we're in a really good place right now. I'm not sure. I'm not Come sure. Come on. That's one, but you own 65%. That was our valuation cap that's, back in 2018. So. Yeah, that's fine. But you own 65%. What is that? 1.3 pre-taxes, post-tax mm-hmm. in Canada. What is that going to put in your pocket? 900,000 post-tax. Are you married? Uh, single. Single. Okay. Does your, did you, is there, are, your, are your parents alive? Yes. Does, yeah. Will your mom kill you if you tell her you turn down a $900,000 like, deal that would put that in your pocket post, post-tax? She, she may not talk to me for a few years, but for my <laughs> daughter, her grandchild. So <laughs> that's so funny. All right, man. Good stuff. Let's wrap up with the famous five, Aaron. Number one, yeah. favorite, favorite book. Um, I'm going to give you two if I can, because I have to give credit to Liar's Poker by uh, Michael Lewis. That's what inspired me to get into business when I was like 15 or 16. Um, more recently, though, of a more applicable nature to what I do is The Innovator's Dilemma, Clayton Christensen. I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard that a million times. Just to really help the thinking vis-a-vis like how to innovate in a mature market. So number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, probably Tobias Lutke. Like obviously Canadian, uh, more like an inspiration, smart guy, made some very, very good decisions. And I love the story of Shopify. So number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Honestly, we're very heavy Slack users, but if I look at the one tool that helps us drive internally, it's actually Azure DevOps. Mm-hmm. Not particularly sexy, but we live and die by what goes into DevOps. Aaron, how much sleep do you get each night? Seven, seven That's and a half. good. And situation, I think you said you're single. Any kiddos running around? I got a beautiful 10-year-old daughter and a nine-month-old puppy. Oh, wow. Okay, got it. One kiddo. And how old are you? I am 47. 47. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Oh, gosh. Honestly, I, I just wish uh, that I'd known to get in earlier. I remember a classmate in 1996 saying, I'm going to go off and build apps for BlackBerry. And I thought, what, what is that? Like, why don't you become a banker or a consultant? That's what all the cool kids are doing. So I just wish I'd had that entrepreneurial spirit a lot earlier. Guys, there you have it. Aaron at carrot.com, HR tech play. They help you reward your employees and put together great incentive plans, doing $15,000 a month in revenue back in 2019, now doing $40,000 a month in revenue. Combination of SaaS plus percent of GMV. That GMV are companies buying rewards for their employees. And they take a little cut, 3% of those rewards. They've got 100 customers today, paying an average $230 per month. They raised 300 grand back in 2018 at a $2 million valuation. Team size is six today, four engineers. They looks to scale. Aaron, thanks for taking us to the top. My pleasure, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.